I'm Emily Nathan and this is Artnet TV. It's Thursday, November 10th, and I'm here at the Abrams Art Center with Simon Fujiwara, whose Performa performance debuted last night, and tonight he will be performing again. I'm an artist and doing a theatre play for Performa this time, which is a conglomeration of um, three different short performances that have been sort of abridged. Mm -hmm. um, and those three performances loosely tell a kind of biography. And they're in three acts. We're sitting in um, one of the sets now, which is uh, on a revolving stage. And those three acts are, um, as I say, three different performances. The uh, first one is called The Mirror Stage. And it's the story of um, a abstract expressionist painting that supposedly turned me gay at the age of 11. Um, the second performance is set in the Spanish bar that my parents owned in the 70s under Franco, in which I supposedly <coughs> have been trying to write an erotic novel based on my parents' lives. And the third act, which is new for um, performer, is called Proposal for a Wedding, and it's a farcical wedding piece in which we're sitting um, in this sort of slightly nasty wedding scene and this piece is based on a camera that I found in New York in a taxi cab last time I was here a year ago um, and this is an attempt to recreate the wedding photos that I found on that camera. This is I, th I take it your first time doing a, a pr an art performance piece in a bona fide theatre setting. Can you tell us a little bit about what that was like for you? I'll start with that. When I present my works in, in galleries, I create a context that is quite close to a theatrical context. So you become immersed in a, a set. It wasn't a, a great stretch to move my work into the theatre. It's nice to have a controlled environment for an art audience, which is often very distracted. In the first performance, A Mirror Stage, I talk about having a kind of brief mini student career in the theatre and was very much involved in the theatre but I never, I could never really enjoy the fact that it was sort of doing other people's plays um, or stories that had already been written and I always thought that the, the process between writing and presenting it was, was strangely separated and also between the actors and the script and what I've tried to do always um, certainly with the actors that I use and Phineas being one is a recurring actor. Uh, I'm Phineas Pett, uh, mm -hmm. I'm in Simon Fujiwara's latest piece, The Boy Who Cried Wolf. But also um, Isaac Jin Solstein who's an 11 year old, a 12 year old actor who plays me at the age of 11. And for the play I'm 11 but really I'm turning 13 on the 17th. Um, I always want to present the actors as themselves, as actors that introduce themselves with their real names and I tell the audience that they are who they are, but they're playing me. It, on the one hand, it's almost like an archaeology of real people in my life. So their biographies become sort of melded into these, these narratives. Um, but on the other hand, it's an attempt to sort of um, see how real life can become fiction, how, how just by presenting pure, straightforward facts, people can really leave and not believe it, mm -hmm. but then take a kind of um, perhaps more symbolic message from it. A recurring sort of theme in your work is the idea of truth and fiction and how we sort of construct identities. Can you speak a little bit about how you see fact and fiction um, working in your art and in last night's performance as well? People often ask me about that relationship between fact and fiction and, and <clears throat> how I construct these stories that are quite on a delicate line between the two. And, um, and how constructed they are. I think the root for me is the fact that I think the two are obviously inseparable and of course everything that we think is a fact may well be fiction and vice versa. So um, it's not that I'm particularly interested in the, uh, in the separation between the two but more revealing the fact that there actually maybe isn't a separation. You use um, a series of sort of devices. There's all these sort of mini meta um, windows, I guess, into the process of constructing this work of art as you're constructing it. Can you maybe talk about that a little bit as a, as a device for, produ for producing um, a work? To, to get back to this idea of the sort of meta and the layers, I liked it's again this um, background of, of coming to the art world and seeing it perhaps in a, more, in a structural way. 
and, uh, and entering a gallery and seeing sculptures actually as props and of course the galleries as backdrops to those props and therefore social situations taking place between them rather than actually looking at works in their own right and so that's I suppose how I develop a sense of within the sets or the installations that you know everything becomes um, both the real thing and just a driver in the narrative. As a performance artist, how do you conceive of yourself in relation to the trajectory of performance art, I guess would be my question. Okay. Well, I've never described myself as a performance artist, so I've never thought about the trajectory of it. Um, I've enjoyed seeing old performance works redocumented. Obviously works like Dan Graham's Mirror performance, which is referred to in the Mirror stage piece that I do. But I come from uh, through architecture and architecture is a, a field where you're constantly presenting fictive proposals for buildings as if they are real um, edifices and um, you are constantly presenting and um, trying to win an audience over with a narrative that doesn't necessarily exist through a number of props and drawings. A lot of my work is about um, the a kind of um, deconstruction of the role of the artist. Having studied architecture and then going to art school, there was a lot of snobbery about my background as not being a real artist. And I felt I would never shake that off. And I realised that very quickly that, you know, within the art world especially, your biographies are written for you by other people and constantly repeated. And I thought, well, why does everyone else get the fun? <laughs> why can't I do that for myself? Yeah.